Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. If you would like to support this channel, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Fail Rate. I was working in a metal fabrication shop and we were repairing a bunch of parts that came off the robot. Basically, there was quite a bit of work that went into each part, but there was about 12 inches of rail that the robot couldn't do that we had to do by hand. And they had to pass ultrasonic testing. I was getting 10 parts done in a shift as well as 120 inches of rail, while the guy I was working with would get 2 parts done and 24 inches of rail. One Friday, the foreman comes over and asks the other guy if he wanted to work Saturday, but not me. I asked if he could use my help too, and he said, no, I'd rather have guys working Saturday that can pass their UTs 100%. I pointed out that not only did I do 5 times the work, but I passed about 99% of the time. I would fill about 1 inch of red per 120, and I'd have it repaired and passed before the end of the shift. This still wasn't good enough, and he basically told me it didn't matter since I'm still failing. So come Monday, I only started completely finishing two parts a day and got my passing rate up to 100%. The foreman comes over frantically in the middle of the week, trying to find out why my productivity has decreased so dramatically. I said, sorry boss, I was trying to work on my pass rate. His face got red, it was hard to keep a straight face, but I started getting Saturday work after that. The next story is called New Floors. In the early 2000s, I was a floor installer for new homes. One of the floors we installed was sheet vinyl. Most of the homes by us are built on concrete slabs. Before the vinyl can be installed, we prep the concrete for holes, cracks and other irregularities. Most of the time it takes 30 minutes to prep. Anything over that is an extra charge to the builder. This year, the vinyl manufacturers came out with a new vinyl floor that was very smooth with little texture on it. That means it shows every imperfection in the concrete. We started to get complaints from the new homeowners about high spots and low spots in the concrete showing through the vinyl. Long story short, the builder blames us and wants us to replace the floor for free to make the homeowners happy. We explained that the concrete is the problem and we did not pour the concrete. He said it's our problem once we install the floor. Ok then, the next day I go to my next home and spend an extra hour with a 10 feet level, marking every imperfection I can find. I ask the builder how he wants to fix the floor. He tells me to prep it. I have him sign my work order, giving me permission to charge extra for prepping the concrete. We charge 150 per hour to prep in those days. Much more now. I spend all day prepping the concrete. Later that afternoon, the builder stopped by, wondering why I was still there. I told him if I was going to be responsible for the concrete, I was going to make sure it was right. I came back the next day and spent another 4 hours prepping before going to the builder. I told him I believe it was ready for vinyl, but I need him to inspect it in case I missed anything. He walked over to the house and saw all that I did to the floor. I told him if it's to his expectations, he needs to sign my work order, stating he approves the prep work and I can install my vinyl. He realized I turned the tables on him and reluctantly signed my work order. I got paid over 12 hours of prep at $150 per hour. We never got stuck replacing another floor for free ever again. The third story is called Complain to Everyone. The last school year has been challenging for me at work. I'm an English high school teacher, not in the US, and the work environment at the school has been going from bad to worse as the school year progressed. Our principal has created a very hostile and toxic work and learning environment that has made many young teachers leave, even at the start and middle of the year. This is very uncommon in my country. I and many of the other teachers have felt bullied and oppressed. Our complaints went unheard and ridiculed, with the principal targeting many of us, young and experienced teachers alike, for public shaming sessions. And my turn came last week. I asked for a meeting with her to discuss my desire to go back to university next year to complete my thesis, which would have resulted in me taking Tuesdays off. All teachers in my country get a day off, which is usually for us to choose. As soon as I walked in, she called the pedagogical administrator and they both started a 30 minute shaming session. I was told that I'm a lousy teacher, that my classes are boring, they never attended any of my classes, that I have conspired to ruin English teaching at our school. 
and that students, parents, other teachers and administrators have been complaining about me. She wants teachers to work full time, which she knows I plan on doing anyway and have been asking for it for two years, and advised me to take a break from teaching, unpaid leave. I was shocked and speechless. In my three years at the school, I received only praise from everyone I worked with. My students, their parents and colleagues love me. The following day, I went ahead and turned in my notice. She called me a liar. I told other teachers what happened, as they saw me coming out pale and on the verge of tears out of her office, and said that I couldn't take criticism. She has also started lying about me to colleagues and other school principals. They all know me and told me. She also told me to complain to whomever I want. Cue malicious compliance. I waited to file the complaint until I secured a new position. However, I decided to follow that last bit of advice from her. I sent it to whomever I thought might be interested. The Regional English Teaching Inspectorate, the Regional General Inspectorate, the Teachers Union, any other official and inspector I knew in my country's Ministry of Education. And, the best part, every teaching college and program in a 200 km radius. This included the most prominent and largest education programs in my country and area. The principal had to beg the ministry to send them new teachers, as quite a few of us left at the end of last year. Most of the poor English teachers she did get contacted me via mutual friends and colleagues, asking me for help getting new positions, as the work environment has only gotten worse. A request to which I gladly obliged. The complaint itself didn't impact the principal professionally, but she will have a pretty difficult time filling positions for the next few years. A few colleagues from that school will join me next year, as they kept calling me to vent about the worsening conditions there. So I just told them to send me their CVs, which my coordinator was more than happy to receive. As for me, I found a wonderful school outside of my city, where I could rediscover my love of teaching. Not only have I found a place where I feel good, but I also found a second job. I now teach at my local college, where the hourly rate is 5 times my school's salary. The last story is called, What Did You Expect? Many years ago, I worked on the UK railways as a food server, taking food up and down the train and offering tea and coffee. On this particular occasion, I was required to work a train from Birmingham to Edinburgh and then pass back. This means just traveling back to your original destination without working or assisting the team on board. As I got on board the train at the front first class section and in full uniform, I was stopped by a passenger in first class. They asked if I was serving. I tried to explain that I am not and that your server was just setting up the section and would be along shortly. I was heading to help the assistant in the main body of the train, bigger section. So, the lady. She was a very well known person traveling with another person and security staff. She threw a Scottish 20 pound note on the table and said, go get me a bag of cravers from the onboard shop. I explained the service was starting shortly and that the server will provide snacks for you. To which I was told, just get me the cravers. Q, the malicious compliance. I politely said, no problem, and set off down the train, dragging my carry bag and equipment with a smile plastered on my face, heading for the shop thinking okay, I can do this. As I'm walking away from the lady, I clearly heard her say to her companion, what a horrible man, I just want to get rid of the Scottish 20 pound note. The train was returning back south of the border. Not many locations like to accept Scottish notes, even though they are perfectly legal tender. Well, I thought I'm doing you a favor, and you were rude. So, as a polite member of staff, I head to the shop to purchase the crisps and get the customers change. I then swap the staff's free UK 5 pound notes for the three Scottish ones I have plus the loose change. I returned to the customer and gave them their crisps and change, to which they protested. I wanted my change in English notes, to which my response was, we are just leaving Scotland. What money did you expect me to have? As I spun on my heel and walked off with a massive grin on my face, I also caught the smile on our security star's face with a look of touché. Lesson to learn. Never cross the trolley dolly. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and want to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.